Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1227, the slider box, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. This die set makes a two-piece box that includes a sleeve and a drawer, and the measurements on that are about four and a quarter by two and a quarter by three quarters of an inch. Now, while you can put all sorts of fun things inside the slider box, it is perfectly sized to fit our surprise cube pop-up. So for a very fun surprising card, you can stack up three fully decorated surprise cubes inside the slider box, and then as the drawer is pulled out, those cubes expand and fly everywhere. This is the video for assembling the slider box, so I'm going to focus on that, but there is a separate assembly video for how to put together the surprise cube. I am going to start with the biggest die in the set that cuts the drawer. So that will cut all at one time. The score lines are in there as well, and you can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. Today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. Now every score line in the piece folds away from you like a mountain fold. So I'm just going to go around and work all of those folds. Cardstock weight doesn't really matter with this die set. If you used a really light cardstock, you're probably adding decorator pieces to it anyway. It also doesn't matter if you're using smooth cardstock or textured, so just go off of whatever color you want to use. Completely optional, but if you'd like those folds to be a little crisper, you can hit them with a bone folder. I find I like to use a bone folder if my cardstock is textured. Next, I'm going to get the ribbon pull put onto the drawer. So you start with about a five inch piece of ribbon. It doesn't really matter what type of ribbon. You just have to be able to get the ends through the hole in the drawer so that you can tack those ends down on the inside of the drawer. So I'm just going to use a tape runner for that and then just separate those ends and get that into that tape runner. Now I'm going to take that same tape runner and just use it to get those tabs stuck into the drawer where they need to go. So I'm going to fold the tabs over so that I can add tape runner to the outside and then bring those up to establish the corners, making sure that everything looks nice and straight. And then that tape runner will keep those tabs in place for me while I add glue all over the long panel out on the end. And then I just fold that over and into the drawer and that will sandwich my tabs as well as cover up the ends of my ribbon. And I like using glue for that because it's much more permanent. So with a tape runner, I'm just using it basically to just kind of tack my, my tabs down to make those corners initially. And then I switch to the glue to have that longevity. And I am using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. I absolutely love that glue. It dries clear, it dries fast, and it just has really, really held up nicely with all of the pop-ups. Okay, so a little quilting clips can be helpful just to hold things in place while the glue sets up. And that is all there is to it for assembly of the drawer. The box sleeve is made with two cuts of this die and then one cut of this rectangle that is the box end. Now that big die is nice and open, so as long as my cardstock isn't too thick, I should be able to cut through two layers at once. So just running that through my die cutting machine to get the two cuts on the big one and then the one cut of the small rectangle. All of the score lines in both pieces should be folded away from you like a mountain fold. And I do like to use a bone folder to get some nice crisp folds. And do just make sure that you have oriented them both the exact same way, meaning you're starting with identical pieces so all of the folds are the same and you haven't accidentally flipped one over. Okay, so now I'm going to use the long tapered tab to connect the two pieces together. And then there'll be another long tapered tab on the other side to connect the other side. So I'm basically just making a sleeve by adding some strong glue to that tapered tab and connecting the two halves together. And if you do have something like a little small clip, like those quilting clips, that can be very helpful for just holding the two pieces together while the glue sets up. Then I do the same thing on the other side to complete the sleeve. And again, some clips are really helpful just to keep that in place while the glue sets up. Okay, then I want to use the four tabs that are on one end of the box to create that end. So I'm basically gonna fold in the long ones first and then the short ones. 
but you'll see that there's a little slack in it. You know, you can it can wiggle. And one way to make sure that it stays straight is to go ahead and put the drawer in while you're connecting those tabs so that they stay nice and straight. Now, technically, it really wouldn't matter if you put the short sides in first and then, you know, glued the long sides down or the opposite way. I just, I just chose to put the long sides in first and then press the short sides to them. Then I'm going to add my glue all over the long tabs and the short tabs, just making sure I don't get any glue down in the area between. That's actually my drawer in there, so I don't want any glue in the middle. And then I take that box end rectangle and just press it to that glue to complete the slider box. So I find having the drawer inside just allows me to give it a little bit of pressure. If instead I took the drawer out and press it against the table this way, I still have to find something to get down in there to get pressure against that rectangle. So I just find it's easier to do with the drawer inside. But that is it. That is the completed assembly of the slider box. It is now ready for decoration. We have so far only used three of the 10 dies in this set and everything else is decorator pieces. So there is a small rectangle that will fit the end of the drawer or the end of the sleeve. And then there is another one that has a hole in it. So that's the one that you can use on the ribbon end. There's also a long rectangle, and that long rectangle will fit the drawer sides inside and out, as well as the sleeve. So these dies can be used on both the drawer and the sleeve. So I'm using the largest rectangle, and then plus the long one and the one for the end to decorate the sleeve of the box. And that's just a piece of pattern paper I found in my stash. It had some bricks on it, which I thought was cool. And I typically do not reach inside and add any decorator pieces on the inside of the sleeve. I just do the outside. Now for the drawer, I actually do like to decorate inside the drawer and outside the drawer. So I'm starting with the pieces for the inside and then I'll use those same pieces on the outside, but I do need the one that has the hole in it for the end where the ribbon is. So I can just slide the ribbon through the hole and then that decorator piece will fit perfectly on there and leaving that little shadow. And of course you can decide. I mean, it will work fine whether it has decorator pieces on the inside and outside or not, but I just find that I like it for durability, still fits in the sleeve, no problem. There are two rectangles that have a decorative edge pattern. That is actually the same edge pattern as on the decorator pieces in the surprise cube pop-up. So these two dies really work wonderfully together. I am going to be filling my slider box with surprise cubes, and so my thought was to add a greeting in the bottom of the drawer that would be revealed when the surprise cubes fly out. So I've used the largest of the decorative edge rectangles, plus a trimmed piece of that long rectangle for a stripe, and then for a greeting I'm using Miss You from our Word Set 14 Hugs set that comes with the greetings and the shadows and the little heart. And then that's going to fit perfectly down in the drawer to be revealed when the cubes fly out. The smaller of the two decorative edge rectangles can be matted with a very thin mat with the slightly larger rectangle. So I'm going to use that on the front of the sleeve and then more pieces out of that word set 14. So sending a smile with the heart. And then the camera came out of our memory charms die set. So I've assembled that and I'm going to add that to the front as well. So the Surprise Cube pop-up works wonderfully with the slider box. It is sold separately and has its own assembly video. So I assembled three Surprise Cubes. I decorated them with photos and pattern paper. Those photos are at least a decade old, y'all, but I just had them sitting around. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna use these because they're good for the video. And obviously you don't have to use photos on your cubes. You could just decorate those with whatever you want to, but it is kind of fun with photos. You can imagine maybe like a graduation card with photos of the graduate over the years, or maybe it's a birthday card. It could really be anything, anniversary. But let's just look at the slow-mo again because I just think it's really fun. Now, if you were giving this in person, you could just hand it to the person, or you could use one of those small business envelopes, like for a mini slimline. That would fit nicely with the box. I don't know if I would mail it in that. I think if I were mailing it, I would use a bubble mailer. In fact, you can fit two in a bubble mailer. Okay, I already know what you're thinking, and the answer is, sure, why not? Throw some confetti in between those cubes. 
I mean, it just depends, I suppose, on how diabolical you are and whether or not they will retaliate. So just think of those things. The slider box die set is a big die. It is the biggest we offer by far. And because of that, it is the most expensive. So here on the assembly video, I wanted to give you a bonus idea. With a little bit of modification to the drawer, you can actually use two drawers to make a lidded box. So that is a bonus idea. It will still fit those surprise cubes inside it, but instead of it being a slider box, it is a box with a lid. You may find sometimes that you prefer that, but it does require you to do a little bit of work with your scoring board. So what those modifications are going to do are change the footprint of the drawer so that it's just a little bit smaller. And when it's a little bit smaller, that means you can use it as the bottom box and then use a drawer assembled like normal as the top. So after die cutting a drawer, the one you want to use for the bottom, you would then put the long side into your scoring board, score it at five and five eighths and six and three eighths, and then we'll end up cutting it at seven and an eighth. Turning to the short side, you're going to score it at two and seven eighths inch and cut it at three and five eighths of an inch. Okay, so let me demonstrate how I do that. I'm going to put the long side of the drawer in my scoring board and I'm going to go out to five and five eighths of an inch and score across the whole piece, except my post-it notes in the way. So let me do that again. Five and five eighths of an inch, score across the piece. Then I need to go out to six and three eighths of an inch and score across again. All right, and then I have to cut it, but I'll do that second. All right, then I'm gonna flip it in the scoring board so I'm doing the short side. There's just one score line at two and seven eighths of an inch. I just go all the way through the whole piece. So there you see it, new score lines that are basically bringing in the footprint of that drawer so that it's just a little bit smaller. Okay, for cutting, I just need to take an eighth of an inch off of both sides. So on the long side, I just need to go out here to seven and an eighth which basically means that I'm going to trim off an eighth of an inch off of the end for the fold over. And then I can check it. I can fold that over and see if that was enough because it needs to stay out of the fold inside. Now I can see that mine would probably work a little better with a little bit more shaved off and I'm just going to do that with my scissors. So that is, a, you know, to your eye, you just need to make sure that that can fold over and you can still operate the fold for the box itself. All right, over here, three and five eighths of an inch. That's hard to measure unless I fold these over. Then it's really easy to get it in my trimmer and go to three and five eighths of an inch. And then I can just cut right through it. Then just a few snips with my scissors and I'm ready to assemble. And I must reiterate, this is a bonus idea. So if it doesn't interest you to do these modifications, great, just scroll right on by this section. I basically need the tabs to work with the new score lines. So down here in the bottom right corner, I need to take this eighth of an inch and cut up to the score line. And that's just going to become part of the tab that folds in. So it's pretty long right now. I'll just snip it somewhere about, you know, about in even with the other tab. It'll be hidden. It doesn't matter. No modifications on that side. Up here, I'm going to start with this tab because that's just easy. I just have to take my scissors and snip that extra eighth of an inch so it goes down to my new fold line, okay? And then the last one over here, I'm doing the same thing that I did on the other side. So I'm taking off the entire eighth of an inch up to this new score line. And then since it's so long and awkward, I'll just take snip a bit off the end. Okay, from here, it is just normal assembly. So I'm just going to find the score lines. I'll start with the two sides where I didn't put a new score line in it. So that's just the, the same score line that the die made on that side and on the end here. Those are just the same score lines that were made by the die. And I like to reinforce with a bone folder. Okay, then when I get to the other two sides, those have the two side-by-side -side fold lines, the one that the die made and then the one that I made. And I'm using the one I made. So the one that's the more inside fold line is the one that I would want to work. So now I can go ahead and fold up and glue this box. I do not need a ribbon because this is not a slider box, so I don't need a pull on it. So instead, I'm just going to work on the tabs and the foldovers. So some glue on the tabs, or that could be a tape runner, whatever you like. I'm just going to use my glue. And in fact, rather than wait for that glue to set up on the tabs, I'll just go ahead and do the foldover at the same time, and then I can clip it and let everything set up together. So just making sure I have nice crisp corners, getting that fold over around the tabs, and then I'll just clip that while I work on the other end. 
moving to the other end, I have the exact same thing. So I have the fold in tabs and there is that little skinny bit that's just going to be treated like it's part of the tab. I'm putting glue on the tabs and then I forgot to work this fold right here for the fold over. So I'll get it started, but then when I fold it into the box, I'll give it a good crisp fold at that time. So I just forgot to work that fold. All right, so getting the corners with the tabs in place and then the fold over, really getting it in there nice and straight. And then I can move my clips so that that side sets up. So now I have my slightly smaller drawer that can be the bottom box and then assembling a drawer like normal with no modifications will give me the perfect one to use as a lid. So that would normally be the drawer that would pull out of the slider box. Now it's going to become the lid for this kind of box. And there is enough room between those two pieces that you can decorate both the inside of the lid and the outside of the bottom box and they still work fine. The only thing about decorating the bottom one is that you need to make the decorator pieces a little smaller so they fit. So what I've found is that if you just cut right on the score line on both ends, that seems to be the perfect amount to take off when you've done this modification and then those will fit the box just perfectly. Same thing with the one for the short ends. I don't need the one that has a hole in it because I don't have any ribbon on this one. So I'm just going to cut through both of them on the score lines on both ends. And then that will fit the short end of the box and cover up the hole from where my ribbon was not needed. So it doesn't matter where that hole is because it's going to get covered up by decorator paper. For inside the modified box, I can use the second largest rectangle. I decided to make mine a birthday box, so I used our word celebrate down in the bottom box and then decorated all of the sides. And then I just assembled another one, a drawer like normal, to be the lid. And so then on the outside, I added those glitter stars. I cut those with the star die from the surprise cube pop-up. Okay, speaking of surprise cubes, if you do want to fill this modified box with surprise cubes, then materials matter. Because if you've used heavy 100 pound cardstock for your cubes like this, then what you may want to do is just not use decorator inside pieces on your box. So just leave your box on the inside, whatever color you made it out of, and just don't put those decorator papers in there. Same thing with this one, it's 100 pound, because it's coming right to the edges and you don't want it to get trapped in there. However, those photo cubes that I made for the earlier project, those worked wonderfully in the Celebrate box. And that is because I actually used a lightweight cardstock to make those photo cubes. That white cardstock is actually just 65 pound cardstock from the craft store. So if you make lightweight cubes, then they are small enough to stack up in the modified box, no problem. Now this is not an assembly video for the surprise cube. There's a separate one for that. But when you are using lightweight cardstock, when you get to this point where normally you just press these two opposite sides and it stretches your rubber band out and then you complete attaching the tabs, it's hard to do that because that cardstock is so lightweight. So it's just hard to stretch it across at this point to complete the cube. So if you want to use lightweight cardstock for your cubes, my suggestion is Decorate it. Right now, at least put a nice heavy 80 to 100 pound cardstock on all sides of the cube before you do the final assembly. And once you do that, you will have strengthened that enough so that you can easily grab your two opposite sides and stretch it across like normal. So when you go watch that other assembly video, you'll see me make those cubes out of like 100 pound cardstock or 80 pound cardstock. Normally, you don't have to decorate them first. But if you are using lightweight cardstock for your cubes themselves, then you do want to at least get one layer of decoration on before you finish your assembly. So now because that cube is made out of the lightweight cardstock, then it is a smaller footprint than the ones made out of the heavy cardstock and it fits nicer in that modified box. And I just attached a ribbon in the center of the bottom of the box and just tied it up into a bow. So with this die set, you can make both. You can make the slider box as it was intended, pull the drawer, fill it with whatever you want, including surprise cubes. Or if you want to give those modifications a try, you can use two of the drawers together to make a lidded box. And for this one, I decorated those cubes using our big birthday charms. And then for a greeting, I used our word set too. Okay, so that ends the assembly video portion of the slider box. But now let's look at some inspiration by our talented design team. 
super cute idea to make a gender reveal box. So Lois made this one. You can see she's decorated the outside equally in blue and pink and then changed it to all pink on the cubes on the inside. Sue Small Crider asks a question with her slider box, will you? And then inside are surprise cubes and the bottom one says, marry me. And she has used our wedding charms on those cubes. I love this idea by Sandy Diller to ring in the new year with a slider box and some surprise cubes. Another slider box and cube combination by Sandy Diller. The happy birthday die fits really nicely on the front of the slider box. Lois Bach with our holiday charms and a stamp on the front of the slider box and then inside she's decorated four cubes with various Christmas papers. Another idea by Lois using some of her favorite stamps on the cubes and the slider box. Frances Byrne shows how well the Santa from the Gnome and Santa die set would fit on the front of the slider box. Here's a sweet Thinking of You slider box by Karen Aiken using our Get Well charms. And then inside, instead of surprise cubes, she's using the Bam Box pop-up, which is a smaller rubber band pop-up. She stacked two of those to animate her Get Well Soon greeting and then filled the box with candy. Fran Sabad made a Christmas themed slider box and again used the BAM box, but this time to animate a gift card inside the box. So much to see in this great idea by Karen Aiken. First of all, she put a window in the front of the box, which I think is really clever. Then inside she has two surprise cubes, but then also a snowman that is attached to a BAM box. And Karen reports that as the stuff flies out of the box, the snowman almost always lands correctly. The slider box die set is available now at a lot of your favorite local and online retailers and will be available from our website, karenberniston.com, starting December 12th, 2022. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.